بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد All praise to Allah Jalla Jalaluhu Amma Nawaluhu who has granted us this gift of Iman and has made us from the best of Ummats. Likewise, we have been fortunate to have been endowed and blessed with the Quran Kareem. Shahru Ramadan Alladhi Unzil Fihi Al Quran Hudallin Nas. This Quran, which is revealed in the month of Ramadan, tells us that the month of Ramadan is the month where we can maximize on Quran, maximize Hudallin Nas in drawing Hidayat and guidance from Allah. So two aspects, one is the Barakah and the blessings of the month of Ramadan and secondly the Qur'an وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ and clear proofs of guidance and a criterion of that which is right and that is wrong. So ulama have explained that Ramadan comes from the word ra mim dad why? Because it is called uh, إِنَّمَا سُمِيَ Ramadan. It is called Ramadan Al-Irmad wa huwa Al-Ihraq Because in this month the gunas which a person had committed good deeds will eliminate it. So when a person gets Hidayah they will do good deeds. So through Quran and through Ramadan. So fortunate are people who excessively make tilawat of Qur'an in Ramadan and likewise keep the routine out of Ramadan as well where through tilawat of Qur'an a person's maghfirat uh, is achieved. Other ulama have said that it's from uh, another origin from the same word here لِأَنَّ الْقُلُوبْ تَأْخُذُ فِي مِنْ حَرَارَةِ الْمَوْئِضَى like how the burning sensation thus burning will take place like how a rock in a hot sun absorbs the heat in the soil a person will absorb the lectures, the advices, the nasiha, the warnings of Quran and Hadith that will penetrate the heart and through that penetration all evil will be dispelled. So we see Ibn Kathir has mentioned what is specific about Ramadan. We find the divine scriptures. Unzil al-Suhuf Ibrahim fi awwali layla min Ramadan. In the first night of Ramadan, the Suhuf of Ibrahim salam, the pages. Then, wa unzilat al-Tawratu. The Torah was revealed in the sixth night of Ramadan and the Qawl Ibn Ahmad is mentioned. Then the Injil on the thirteenth and the Quran in this way, twenty-fourth. Other ulama have given different opinions, twenty-seventh on the night of Qadr, on whichever night it uh, is. So the ayam of Ramadan is specific and dedicated to revelation. Where Quran was revealed Jumla Wahida, uh, it was revealed at one time to the Sama U Dunya and then gradually to Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam. But when Allah subhanahu wa is saying Bayinat that whatever is clear, it is unambiguous, all the signs are clear. It is unequivocal proof for those people who want to find Allah. So in Quran, there are proofs, there are signs, and these proofs testify to the genuineness and the truth of the Quran, to the guidance of the Quran. And it is opposition to misguidance and batil and this inclination to anything which will take a person away from Allah, this Qur'an will guide a person. In the riwayat of Abdullah ibn Masood Allah that this Qur'an is the Dastar Khan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Qur'an is the tablecloth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 
Thus, Quran, since it is the table cloth of, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَتَعَلَّمُوا مِنْ مَعْدُبَتِهِ مَسْتَدَعْتُمْ So, partake of this as much as you can. No one can stop you. It's open-ended. إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ حَبْلُ اللَّهِ This Quran is the strong rope of Allah. So hold steadfast onto this robe because it will protect a person from slipping and falling. When Nur al Mubin, when Nur al Mubin, and this Quran is a clear light. So acquire this light, it will save a person from stumbling, it will save a person from darkness, and in the darkness, there is destruction. وَالشِّفَاءٌ نَافِعٌ And this Qur'an is a cure. So use the scripture for it will save a person from all illnesses and all maladies. إِسْمَةٌ لِمَنْ تَمَسَّكَ بِهِ وَنَجَاتٌ لِمَنْ اتَّبَعَهُ And it is an object for success. It will protect a person it will preserve a person for the one who holds steadfast onto it. وَلَا يَزِيغُ فَيُسْتَعْتَبْ وَلَا يَعْوَجُ فَيُقَوَّمْ And it is such that if a person goes astray, it will bring one on the road of Sirat Mustaqim through guidance. And it will guide one to the straight path so whole, make a concerted effort to recite on Qur'an, to practice on it, for it will protect a person from the fire of Jahannam. وَلَا تَنْقَذِي أَجَائِبُهُ وَلَا يَخْلَقُ أَنْ كَثْرَةِ الرَّدِ And this Qur'an, its marvel does not end. It's a treasure of knowledge. It's a trove of miracles. And you can loot and plunder it as much as you want. The treasure will never be depleted. Fatluhu. So continue making tilawat of this Quran. So Sahaba has set a standard, and they used to make Hazrat Uthman radiallahu used to read so much Quran that the pages of the Quran became worn out, and he went through two mushafs scripts of the Quran. How much Qur'an should you make? And it is not the pages of today in the scripts where they should be inscribed in those days. That became worn out. It is reported as Uthman Anhu sometimes to recite the entire Qur'an in a single rakat of his Witr Salah. Likewise, Abdullah ibn Zubair used to recite the whole Qur'an in a single night. Sayyid bin Jubair radiallahu anhu used to recite the entire Qur'an in two rakats of Salah inside the Kaaba. Thabit Banani used to read the whole Qur'an in a day and a night. Likewise was the habit of Azad Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Abu Shaykh Hannai said, I read the entire Qur'an, the whole Qur'an twice, two khatams and ten pas, seventy paras, in a single night. If I wanted to, I could have completed the third reading as well. I would have made three khatams. Saleh ibn Kaysan said that in the course of his journey when he was going for Hajj, it was his ma'amul in habit that he used to complete two Qur'ans each night. He used to make two khatams of the Qur'an each night. Mansur ibn Zazan completed one reading of the entire Quran during Nafal Salah before noon. And the second khatam between Dhuhr and Asr. And he would spend the entire night offering Nafal Salat, weeping so much in front of Allah that his imama, his turban could become wet. Likewise, more incidents have been narrated in Kutub 
of how so much khatams have been made of our pious predecessors. He said about Imam Shafi Rahmatullah that in the months other than Ramadan he completed two khatams. Likewise, it was said about Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah Alayhi, other Aima Aswad Salib bin Khaisan Sa'id ibn Jubair, they used to complete three readings every day. Sulaiman bin Attar was an eminent tabi, uh, was his ma'amun of making three khatams every day. He had taken part in the conquest of Egypt during the era of Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu and he was appointed the ruler as well by Hazrat Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. He used to complete three khatams every night. Three khatams every night. Imam Nawi rahmatullahi writes that uh, in his Kitab al Athkar, the maximum daily recitation reported in Tariq in history was of Ibn al Katib, who used to complete eight khatams, complete readings of the Quran during a 24 hour period. During a 24 hour period, he would make eight khatams of the Quran. So, the Quran is a treasure for whoever wants to seek it, they will find more treasures than they can recoup and recover. So we should try to realize the value of this Quran and Allah is shakir, every amal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala values it. He said about three brothers who were in Russia and at that time there wasn't available copies of the Quran. So they decided that they will draw lots and whoever's chance was to get the Mus'haf, they would be given the Quran for that night. So that was their routine. But they were not familiar with the Arabic language. So anyway, years passed, one of them passed away and the family went to bury him and while they were burying this person, the grandfather, they seen a white bird encircling his cover and then they could feel, feel and, and, and smell the entire area becoming fragrance with a very beautiful scent. They could smell a very beautiful scent. So he was buried and then they said, let us inquire, ma sababu dhalika, what's the cause of this? So they went to the grandmother and they asked her, wa sa'alaha an jaddi, they asked about the grandfather. So she said that uh, whenever it was his opportunity and chance to make tilawat of Quran, he would take the Qur'an and he would spend the night with the Qur'an المصحف, and he would open the Qur'an and remember at that time he did not know Qur'an He would put his finger on the Qur'an and every alphabet and word he would pass it on and he would say Kalamu Rabbi Kalamun Adhimun that the uh, word of Allah is a great word, it's magnificent, it's so great. This word of Allah is so great, it is so magnificent. Through the barqa of that Al-Amal, Allah gave him honor. While in this world, Allah gave us the opportunity to, to, to see this incident. The Ummah, humanity has seen bad testimony to this and in the Qabr we have hope then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat him like that. So Qur'an, the word Qur'an comes from the word qara'a with different meanings. Qara'a yaqra'u in Arabic means to read. So reading, recitation and uh, this is the kalam of Allah. So the fact that the words of Allah are being recited on our tongues is a great bounty and na'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Kalam of Allah after Surah Al-Fatiha, Alif, Lam, Mim. Ulama explained there are 29 Surahs, 
that begin with the letters of muqattaat to teach us that oh insan your knowledge is limited Allah's knowledge is unlimited dive in the ocean of Quran and Allah will open up his knowledge to you Mufassirin have gone in detail let us spend time with the ulama and try to understand the Quran as well then Quran itself one name Quran Majid different Furqan Tabarak alladhi nazzal al Furqan other names Tanzil wa innahu لتنزيل رب العالمين ذكر إن نحن نزلنا الذكر ذلك الكتاب. So different names Allah is mentioned and called the Quran. نور هدى رحمة مجيد مبارك بشير نذير. So as mentioned, Alama Suyuti in Itqan has mentioned that. Quran was revealed in two stages from the lower Mahfuz, the preserved tablet, to the lowest heaven, the Baytul Izza, on the night of Laylatul Qadr. And the second stage from the heavens to earth in stages throughout the plus minus 23 years of Nubuwa. And the first ayat, Surah Iqra, the verses were revealed on the, the ayyam of Qadr in Ramadan where Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam came to Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam. So that was the beginning of a, a revelation uh, on, the, on the ayyam of Qadr when Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam was 40 years of age, around 16 year and uh, Nabi alayhi salam was in the cave of Hira. So Different ayat, different verses were revealed gradually. More, more than 200 passages in the Quran just begin with the word Qul. Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell them, tell them, tell them. So Allah is saying, Oh Nabi of Allah, tell them. And that what they've been told to tell them as being part of the Quran. So, Qul ya ahla al-kitab, Qul ta'ala, Qul bifawdillah, Qul in tuntum tuhibun Allah, different verses, tell them, tell them, tell them, because the entire Quran is a da'wat, and this is the ummat of da'wah, and we have to take this deen to the four corners of the earth. So during Revelation, first was the Makkah period, before Hijri, and after Hijri, which was called the Medina Madani period. So the Makkan the phase in Mecca which lasted about 13 years where Tawheed, Resurrection, Judgment etc. was revealed and that's where the Iman of Sahaba, Ayat of Imaniyat and Akhirat was revealed. Then the Medinan phase, the Manani phase which was 10 years and there were different groups, the Muhajirin were from Mecca and migrated to Medina, then the Ansar then the Munafiqeen who are in Medina pretending to be Muslim, then the Ahl Kitab, the Jews and the Christians, and then the other groups of people who are the fire worshippers, etc. Mawlana Nishmi should say that Mecca is La ilaha illallah and Medina is Muhammadur Rasulullah because in Mecca Sahaba learn Yaqeen in the Zat of Allah. Bilal radiallahu an, Ahad Ahad, no matter what condition, what hal, I will obey Allah and my yaqeen, my conviction will always turn to Allah. It will never ever go to the creation. And Medina taught us that we have to practice on the sunnah of my Nabi. So when you have yaqeen in Allah, then you will obey the commands of Allah in the pattern shown to us by Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's also say that Badr is la ilaha illallah because Sahaba were ill-equipped and they taught, they were taught this lesson of Iman that Azbab, numbers, weapons, artillery does not do, Allah does. And Uhud, we, we were taught Muhammadur Rasulullah, your salvation is following what Nabi alayhi salatu salam had taught us. So we have these treasures, we should not be blinded by the treasures of dunya and forget the real treasure why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the treasure of the Qur'an. 
They say there was a wise woman who was traveling uh, in the mountains and she found a precious stone in a stream. So she met another lady after that who was very hungry, a beggar. And as this woman opened her bag to give her some food, she, this traveler, saw the stone and said, will you give it to me? So the lady said, no problem. And the traveler left rejoicing that now I will go back to my family and uh, give them this uh, fortune. But she returned back very quickly after that. And she said, before I go on my journey, I want to return this valuable stone because I want to give, I want you to give me something more precious. So the lady said, what can be more precious? You tell me. So she said, I want you to give me the gift that enabled you to give me the stone. The fact that you gave me the stone means you got some treasure in you that nobody else on earth has. So we have the treasure of the Quran. Let us value it. The Amal for today is that we have been encouraged in a situation to not give in and to fight for our rights. Say, Sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah, if a person comes and he attacks me, he wants my wealth. Nabi Salam said, Fala tu'tihi malak, don't give him anything. He said, Ara'ayta in qatalani, if he fights me, Nabi Salam said, said, Qatilhu, still fight him back. And if he kills me, Ara'ayta in qatalani, fa'anta shaheed, then you are shaheed. And if I kill him, then he will be in Jahannam. May Allah give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.